Great, 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 great. Well, I want to do an introduction. Is, 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 I see Jason's right there. Great. Yes. Um, Hello, so good. Yeah. Jason, Calvin, I'd like to introduce you to Miles. Miles How's it going, Miles? guys? How's it? How are you doing? Here, I'll show you around my my beautiful car. <laughs> and beautiful truck stop. Looks yeah. like the weekend of fish. We don't have as as beautiful of a, a view as you. <laughs> Not at all. So uh, but I just want to say thanks, thanks, Miles, for um joining us. Um when I uh first met yeah. Jason. And Calvin here a few months ago. It's, it's been, it seems like it's been four or five months now, hasn't it? It has been a while. Yeah. So um, we, you know, you know, they get, they made it to the, um, why don't you tell them what you did to qualify to make it to this championship? So yeah, happy. So we fish a tournament trail, a team tournament trail called eBass here in South Africa. It's the lead bass alliance series. And uh, there's a total, I think it's 10 tournaments. Yeah. And 10 tournaments throughout the year. Six, six to count. It used to be eight. They just changed it to six recently. And basically, it's the same old five fish, 30 centimeters. You guys, it's 12 inches. Um, and, well, some of your legs are different, but yeah. Um, yeah, basically, out of those top six, as you go forward, we have a thing called the Nationals. It's basically a test. And all the other team tournament trails and divisional anglers all fish together. And then the top six out of that get selected to represent the team tournament trail in, in the States. At the Bassmaster. So we're a Bassmaster affiliated team tournament trail in South Africa. And yeah. what you guys states, we have provinces and there's nine provinces in South Africa. So after the season's done, or once you qualify, you have to place top 15 within your province. And there's anywhere between 50 and 60 teams per province. So the top 15 from each province go through to what we call a national event where all nine provinces compete. Yeah, there's about like 70, 70 boats. So for us, 70 boats is a, a big field. It's the biggest event we've had in the last about 10 years. And then, like Jason said, the top top six teams from that get selected to go through to awesome. And and so you're one of the top six teams that are coming. Sure, indeed. And and the Bassmaster team, I, I'm going to call it the World Championship because everybody's coming from all over. And it happens to be at the Harris Chain, uh, which is located just a little bit north of Orlando. And um, I'm going to be hosting them. That's and really, it's um, it's what. You guys said a forty-hour ordeal to get here from South Africa. Correct. Right. It's a like, it's a long way away for us to come. Exactly. So, um, but we know where we know where the lake is. Um, Gosh, guys. And and Miles has some experience on being there at the Harris Chain, and he's going to share that with you. So, if you guys, um, let's just get kind of get that started. Uh, just kind of back and forth um, a little bit. I'm going to kind of be quiet here and listen in. Um, as you ask questions, as Miles gives his advice on what to do during that time of year, which um, happens to be um, this December 2023. Yes, indeed. We've got some some questions that we, we wrote down earlier. Sure. But Miles, <laughs> we've, we've, it feels like we know you because we've watched quite a few of your YouTube videos already. Um, oh, in terms of thank you. Not we've, I think you've explained a lot in your videos. But the biggest thing for us is time of year. Where, what is the water temperature? Where will the bass be situated? Is it pre-spawn? Are they spawning? Is it just before pre-spawn? Is it like a pre-pre-spawn kind of deal? Or are the bass starting to move up shallow so, yet? Uh, it's beginning of December. I should have asked that so, for competition. First week of December. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so December will be a little bit. Um, so Harris Chain is kind of a weird in a weird spot because it's in Central Florida. Um, once you get down to like the Kissimmee Chain, which is about an hour, hour and a quarter, you know, south of, of the Harris Chain, um, that one it, it becomes a little bit easier to kind of anticipate what mode they are in relation to the spawn. 
Um, right. But Central Florida really just depends on the on what you know the predominant water temperature is. We're having a pretty hot summer, um, but um, I, I think that you're probably going to be more in a a, a pre spawn mode at that time than anything because that you know a lot of the lakes here we get in Florida get kind of a double spawn in, in South Florida. And so you get one, you know, around the, the February, March time period up at, at the Harris chain. Um, uh, and, but then you also get one around October, uh, early November sometimes, right yeah. before it starts getting cold. So I think you're going to be kind of in, in the middle of what we would consider the winter in, in, in Florida. So it's going to be more pre-spawn, but different than what you guys experience because I, I I wouldn't necessarily unless when you get here there's a weather pattern that is pushing the fish in one direction or or another you know that right. you can just say okay we've got this major front that's been that that's been holding on and it's been very very cold you can kind of like you know that they're going to be kind of more of a in a winter pattern but if you had like that cold front and then all of a sudden it's going to get really, really warm for a couple of weeks or something like that, unseasonably warm. Maybe then you're going to be into the pre-spawn more patterns. But um, the thing about Florida lakes, and the Harris chain is a little bit unique. It's quite unique compared to the, the Kissimmee chain or Okeechobee is um, the Harris chain uh, or Florida lakes in general, the fish are going to be in a lot of different areas of the lake so you're not going to have fish just you know deep or just shallow it's going to be everything in between so i wouldn't go to uh put as much emphasis on pre-spawn or 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 um uh winter time or or think too much in those terms uh, for this particular event if we're getting closer to like 100 percent, this is the spawning time period then you start thinking okay i need to start focusing on fish that are about to move up you're going to be december is that time period where it's going to be it's going to be kind of that that time period where it's almost stalling out a little bit there's not as much spawning movement or movement around that spawning transition if that makes sense so they're 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 kind of going to be um there's going to be a lot going on and and it's it's been a while since i've fished in december on the harris chain but you're probably gonna see some fairly cold weather you know it's not going to be the normal florida weather i mean uh it's not going to it's probably not going to be like super cold but you're probably, I mean, what, what would you say, Sig? You'd say, what do you think the water, the, the temperatures are going to be? Because you might know better than me living down there. Recently. Well, I, you know, it's, um, I, I have found that it, it seems like January 1st, always, there's always a cold freeze. I'm at, I've been at Disney World right. with my kids where it's been so cold that we had to go back to the hotel room because it was just freezing. But it seemed like, December is still that it could be, it could be 70 degrees, you know, um, 75 degrees. And, um, yeah. so it, it really going to depend on the weather. Um, That's but amazing. usually December still pretty warm seasonally. Um, yeah. So it's a uh, sort of figure. What? Win me. The, the one thing. No, go, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, so it's more, more we'll figure it out closer to the time watching the weather patterns. We we just got off, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, the water today, and we've just had a cold front that pulled through this morning. And I've, we saw the first female move up onto her bed today. <clears throat> excuse me. And that's all the adjustments we've been making. So we currently fishing our pre-spawn patterns. And like you said, it's an, it's an adjustment that we have to make. So it will be the same, same type of thing when we get that side. Right. Yeah. Um, one thing. So so what what type of fishing do you guys like to do? Like, what is your strengths? Because that's kind of pertinent to, like, kind of help me figure out how to navigate my suggestions on the Harris chain. So with all, all dams, 
uh, we all we don't have any occurring. The as you go across the different landscapes that surround the dams that was there before the dam was built means that we have one dam that's really really grassy, and we'll have dams that are just really really rocky, and then there's dams all in between with lots of trees and 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 so Play. forth. So yeah. if we we would have to say a strength of ours would be power fishing. 100% and that's why we work well as a team together but we can slow it down and yeah we yeah. go really we are the very pound, six pound deal yeah well-rounded anglers we can kind of fish all types of lakes or dams as we could as you would say um we don't really yeah. have or a technique that we would say oh, i would keep in my hand the whole day it would also again be time and, and Dam specific, yeah, but if if I had to pick, I would probably right. go with grass grass fishing. grass fishing. It's just a lot of fun. I really like it. Yeah, um, anything fifteen pound and above, straight braid, straight braid, <laughs> <laughs> some horny toads, well, there's, that yeah. lipless, there's chatter bait, yeah. spinner baits, like really beating the bank or beating an area is a lot of fun, and yeah. I think we, we do generally do really well in the summer months. But again, our winter period mm. doesn't last very long, but we do still spend a lot of time on the water in winter. So, do you guys if, use electronics a lot, or 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 because over here right now we're in a boom on the electronics? It's huge. It's and it's picking up this side as well. A lot of the guys do have insane technology here. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, we can basically student life just got out of it and just working recently yeah so and they're they're gonna be using my boat miles um which um i have i have life scope so um mm -hmm. i've got jason yeah. so there's gonna be sorry go for it please continue sorry uh, I, I was going to say, there's going to be a, a lot of things that you can do on the Harris chain, but what is going to ultimately dominate that event is going to be fishing um, off the bank, offshore. So what used to be a, a great fishery for winning tournaments, fishing Kissimmee grass lines, which is the, the it's also called maiden cane and, and uh, just that grass that, that is visible above the surface. That. Oh, we just completely lost them. Cool. Um, so, um, one of the things I want to ask him too, real important. Here he comes. Is um, how many? There's so many lakes. Where do you? Where we focus on in the that, short time that you guys have? Back. Are the you back, question. Miles? <clears throat> there we go. Yeah. That, that question on so. Is, Go, go ahead, Miles. Oh uh, yeah, I was just I was just uh, saying that um, you know the most dominant things that are going to happen. You you can always find something in, in the grass around the edges of these lakes on the Harris Chain. Um, but in recent years, the more dominant patterns have been off the bank. You know, with in relation to the submerged hydrilla that we've got off the bank and also the sh what they call shell beds uh, out there, you know, those hard spots around the grass and then also brush piles. Um, the Harris chain, uh, the community around there has really put a lot of, of artificial, you know, fish attractors out there. And, you know, the advent of live scope has really started to accentuate those patterns off the bank. Um, in that those offshore grass areas um, and so but I don't mean to say that to, to say that you can only do well with that you you can definitely do well depending on the water pat or the, the temperature patterns and the weather patterns um, you know right on the bank you know fishing the Kissimmee grass or the, the uh, or the reeds and, and things like that um, so there's 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 going to be a lot going on. The biggest suggestion I can give you guys when it comes to the Harris chain, because you're talking about, I think, what is it, eleven lakes? One, two, yeah. three. That's the next question. Five, six, seven, something like that. 
you're, you've got a bunch of different lakes and they all fish very, very different. And the trap that I've put myself, I've had a couple of, of really bad finishes there recently. And it's all been because I got into the grass is greener, you know, trap. And I kept going from one lake to another and I never really dialed it in on any one lake. And I think that you guys um, would benefit from, uh, you know, picking one lake or two lakes and really just honing in on that one or two lakes. And if I was to give probably the best suggestion I can give, uh, I, I would say that the, the two places you want to plant yourself would yeah. be Harris itself. So Harris, Harris is going to allow you, if you stay in, in Lake Harris, um, you can uh, maximize your fishing time. There's every imaginable type of pattern that you will find on the rest of the chain. And it always plays. Every single tournament on the Harris chain, a top 10 is going to come out of Harris um, you know, uh, it's just, it's just nonstop that is, because that's where all the fish are coming to and being released. And, uh, and it's, you know, and just the, fa- when the next term I fish, which will be October, I'm staying in Harris. Uh, I'm going to also check a popka cause that's what I like to do is flip and pitch, you know, shallow grass. But, um, if, if the popka is not like super on, I'm going to be yeah. staying in, in Harris. Okay. Yeah. So it's Harris itself and the pop question you gonna be we don't have luxury of coming there now and, and seeing the dam and, and fishing. We've only up the lake, sorry, or any of the lakes for, for that yeah. matter. Yeah. The on practice day, like you said, the grass is always green on that side. So you think would it be more worth our while yeah. just to question? So you're saying it is more worth our while to spend two days the two practice days that we have two or three days just on one leg and really just focus in. 100%. I would say I'd spend a hundred percent of my time on, on Harris because the thing about the Harris chain, you've got a lot of idols and you've got a lot of locks. So going over to Griffin, Griffin yeah. is, I'll kind of give you my perception of each of the lakes so you can kind of make your decision. Um, Harris, I think, is the most dynamic because you've got great offshore grass in some areas. You've got a lot of hard bottom areas. You've got a ton of brush that they've planted out there. There's a ton of great emergent grass around the edge of it, um, as well as as lots of docks and things like that. It, that's why it's it's probably the number one choice, and it's just bigger. You can spread out more. Um, okay. Eustace is one of Eustace is one of those ones that that um, you, it takes less time to figure it out, um, and it is also a really good one as far as proximity to the launch. You don't have as much time of idling. You just got one idle, um, but it it is a wild card. It's either really good or nothing's going on. Okay. Um, Griffin. Griffin is one of the ones you have to lock through to. Um, Griffin is a spectacular numbers link. Uh, if you want to, if your goal was to go out there and catch as many fish as possible, Griffin is probably the one that you'd want to go to, but I don't think it's going to do you any good. In recent years, it's been very difficult to, to uh, distinguish yourself as far as weight, uh, in Griffin, you go up there and catch 40 fish and only have 12 or 13 pounds. Um, and, but it is a spectacular lake and it's primarily an offshore lake. Like if you were to go through the canal out of the lock, you know, heading into the lake and you turn right, that entire northern end of, of uh, Griffin, there's fish in the dead center of the lake everywhere. And it's just a matter of, you know, covering water with like a swimming worm or something like that um, to find some fish in you know, chatterbait, you know, lipless crankbait. Um, it is a fun lake, but it is, is time consuming as far as getting through the lock. And it's also time consuming through the idols and, and things like that. And I just don't think that it has this, the average size that you guys are looking for. Um, but it, so that's the that's the western side of the, the, the chain. And then once you start in east and you go through the Dora Canal, you get into Dora. 
and uh, and, and uh, Dora is actually the other. Dora and Beauclair are attached by a very small little idol. Um, you know, so I would consider those the same fishery. So Dor- Dora and Beauclair, those, that's the other one that if you were to pick one, you know, lake or, or region um, in the Harris chain, I would pick that one as well. Uh, the, it, it's it, it, in recent years, it's one of been, been one of the best ones and it's been really producing a lot of top tens and, and, uh, and wins and near wins. Um, and, uh, and Beauclair especially has had a lot of great offshore fishing. A lot of tournaments have been won up there. But in my personal opinion, it's really hard to compete against the guys that know that lake really, really well. Because there's been so much uh, focus on that, on Beauclair recently um, and, and Dora, that I think that you're going to have a hard time competing against those guys that know those lakes really well. Uh, right. And then once you get into a, a popka, and you can't ignore any of the canals. One of the things that, that uh, the Harris Chain is known for is its canals. Um, you know, the, the, that's where most of the spawning activity goes down is all those residential canals that you find off, you know, the, the, the creeks and, and, the, uh, and the lakes. And, uh, and the Apopka, the, the canal system, um, between, you know, the residential canals between Beauclair and Apopka can be outstanding. I got a top 10 and a tour event, uh, in the, uh, the actual main canal and, and also caught some big fish in those residential canals on the bed. But I don't know if those are going to play for December. I think it's going to be a little bit too early because those fish move in there when they're ready yeah. to spawn. And so I don't, I don't think that the canals are going to be as big of a deal, but, um, but a pop is one that, you know, in your situation, I wouldn't burden yourself with pop. That being said, somebody's going to potentially win or, or, uh, you know, there's going to. Oh, we, lost him. Again. we lost him again. So yeah. when he when he comes back on, I want to uh, talk. I'll talk about a place that we can go fish a couple of days before the pre fish starts, so we can get used to the area. You guys can. Miles, you back? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say a popka is definitely going to be one. You know, if you guys wanted to do a hail mary and uh, and really just come in for the win, um, that is one that that. You can, it's essentially a flipping lake. You're going there to flip emerging grass, um, you know, reeds, Kissimmee grass and pads. And, and there's, there's, um, I mean, there's more big fish in that lake than anywhere on the chain. Um, and that's where you see a lot of tournaments recently won, or at least it's part of a win. Um, however, it's a, it, it's a, 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 the longest trip and um, it can be off as well, but, uh, if you wanted to go do a Hail Mary and you wanted to keep a flipping stick in your hand, uh, it, like I like to do, um, that's, good. that's one that I, yeah, if, if that sounds like good to you, I would, you know, the, so I know that I've given you guys some, some different ideas because every single lake has its own little like nuance to it that makes it attractive. Harris is is because of the proximity. You're right there next to the weigh-in. You maximize your time, but it also gets a little bit more pressure, and it, it you know it, it it can be hard to find that one like stretch or one area that uh, to win out of. But but, but a, a popka is one that dude. If you want to go there and, and pick up a flipping stick, and you both like are, are flipping, it's a, a phenomenal lake um if it's on you know and it doesn't take much to figure out if it's on it's it, it's it's very obvious once but the, the thing about a popka is that there's a lot of dead water it used to be a lake that that it, it virtually didn't have any fish in it it was a dead lake it was killed from industry so there was only little pockets of of suitable water quality for the fish to actually live in but now that's starting to come back you know because the grass is coming back so it's starting to 
widen widen a little bit, but it's like you could go half of a day of practice and not get but one or two bites, but then you find one stretch of, of grass that um, you catch 25 pounds off, you know, very, very easily. Um, so it's, if, if you, if you wanted to just go do it and, and honestly, I, I say that it's kind of risky, but it's, it's not as big of a risk as you think it's, it's risky time wise, but as far as fishing wise, it could be the best strategy. I, I see it two ways. A popka could be the best strategy for one reason. And then Harris could be the best strategy for another Harris is great because you can maximize your time. Popka is the one that I think is going to be easiest for you guys to find something without having to learn all the different like ways that the the Harris chain fish set up, you know, yes. because like you could spend two days on Harris, maximize your time. And because you guys are behind the eight ball learning all this stuff, um, yeah. you, you could never, you might never find anything, but if you go to a Popka and spend two days, like you'll have, and all you have to do is keep a flipping stick in your hand. You literally will be able to find the, the majority of the things that you need in two days in a pocket. Let and me, it's very Mark. single, single-minded. Yep. Hey, let me ask you a quick uh, question. How far a run is it from Leesburg to, to yeah, like, you go through all the canals and stuff? How far a run is that, Miles? So it's it's not a far run; it's a long run because you have so you, you've got. Um, are you guys launching from Venetian Gardens or, or Hickory Point? That we're not sure yet. I I think it's Venetian Gardens, but don't hold e me to that. Yeah, e either either one. So you're looking at. Uh, I mean, let's. I can't do it because I'm on. Uh, I think it's, I think realistically you're looking at four or five minutes to the lock because you got, you got a five to eight mile run to, uh, to the dead river. That dead river is a hundred percent about 10 minutes of an idle. And then you've got another mile to the door of a uh, door canal, which is another, you know, that one's 15 to 20 minutes of an idle. And then you, got a long run to the lock i'd say 45 to 50 minutes of a run um to the lock and then it just depends on how many guys are locking through um and then and then you, it's a very small lock so there's only three boats that can go in it at one time so if you're you know if you're a very late draw it could take a while but yeah it's still to me, it's not that bad. Once you do it the first time, you're like, ah, it's not, it's not terrible, you know, because it's, it's so worth it. It's like, um, it's like going from one lake that, that, uh, you know, he's all, he jumped off. He put, we got about four minutes left at this end, unless we jump back on again, which probably, um, I think. um but yeah. miles you there. Oh, you're fine. Don't worry about it, man. It's, Modern technology. <laughs> That's what's going on. <laughs> you also have budget. Anyway, we had uh, Miles real quick. We got, but we're down to <laughs> four. We're down to four minutes here. Um, okay. And I know you're you're sitting in the hot um, truck stop there. So, um, but anyway, yeah. what? But so about an hour and a half one way, three hours of fishing lost, just traveling. I th I think it's more like an hour fifteen at, okay. at most. Okay. And it's it's really not that risky. If you can find the fish, it's the it's the least risky proposition on the lake. Sometimes, okay. And we're on and that we're, chain. We're flipping worms, flipping jigs, what? Flipping creature baits. Yeah, yeah. flipping flipping your favorite. Uh, yeah, flipping your favorite beaver style creature bait. Really, kind of the deal. Uh, one thing that the the Harris chain is known for is straight tail worms. So, like a straight tail. The best bait that I like to flip and pitch is the bang sticks from Zemia. Okay, that yeah. that bang sticks is a really really good bait, and I don't know why fish on the Harris chain like straight tail worms, but they do. Okay, and weight wise, what is your your sort of go to like half ounce, one ounce? We're talking heavy or yeah, heavy. you don't need yeah 
you don't need a tremendously head. I have a variety, a bunch of different flipping weights. Um, anything from a quarter ounce for just, you know, loose weed or reeds um, yeah. to three quarter ounce is about as thick as you need because I don't, there's not much hyacinth mats on the, on the Harris chain. So you're not really punching through anything. You're just, like you said, flipping the edges, just getting in. Okay. Right. Yeah. Color, anything specific? Is it just dependent on water clarity at the time? Uh, water clarity, but you can't go wrong with just a June bug or um, that bang sticks. I really like the Bama bug, you know, color. Uh, a dark, dark purple. There's a color that Zoom makes for their trick worms called uh, black grape that is really yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. And Miles, is there a lake? Well, another another way uh, we could just, just a question here on us getting fishing time before we get on the water for the tournament. Yeah, because there's there's off limits, mm. and and we and is there another lake that we can go go and fish? Because they're going to come in a little bit early, uh, you know, um, that we can fish for a couple days. That's not Harris Chain related. Yeah, I would go. You got the Henderson Chain of Lakes. That's actually pretty similar to the the Harris Chain, uh, which is in, in Inverness, Florida. Does it also have uh, shoal beds? Yeah, that one's that one's the most smart because it's another chain of lakes. It's very close to the Harris chain, and it's got a lot of, of you know shell bed opportunities, but also the same type of cover you find around the, the shoreline. And okay. if you were going to go fish uh, the uh, Lake Griffin, I would go to to Panasofki, you know, because that one's pretty much the same type of fishing. Anna? But um, the Henderson Lake, it, it, okay. Panasofki. Okay, perfect. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, which right. lake recommend for us to learn how to fish uh, shell beds? Because uh, from what shell beds are very different to what we have here. We have like gravel or stuff like that. It's pretty much the same thing if you got like gravel. Essentially, shell beds, you know, I did a video on shell beds on my my 